financial vehicle to deliver this inclusion and ignite vigorous economic activity among vulnerable and marginalized Kenyans is the Hustler Fund. And a lot has been said about the Hustler Fund. This is a fund that is now about um, uh, four months old. We have disbursed 23 billion shillings uh, through that fund. We have seven million Kenyans who borrow regularly on that fund. And because we introduced a savings component, already 1.35 billion shillings has been saved by people borrowing as less as between 500 and 1,000 shillings. Recently, we included, even for those who do not want to borrow any money, we included a component in the last one month for those who just want to save. And already in the last one month, seven million shillings has been saved on that platform. And I am encouraged that there are many Kenyans who are prepared to walk with us the journey of saving so that we can also reduce vulnerability to people and give them a chance to access resources when times are difficult. The financial um, other programs include the redesigned National Youth Service, and I will be making some statements about the National uh, Youth Service and how we are going to redesign it. The Youth and Wealth of Fund Enterprise Funds, as well as the National Fund for, Pato for Persons with Disability. The Youth Access to Government Procurement Opportunities, as well as the Youth Training and Internship Program, are also frameworks to facilitate the inclusion and empowerment of formerly neglected, yes, yet immensely critical demographics. Again, as I made a commitment uh, uh, this week, earlier this week, the internship program that we intentionally wanted to bring all our graduating um, young people from all our institutions of higher learning, that they must, we must find a transition mechanism for them so that, and should be funded by the government of Kenya, will also provide a safe landing for our young people coming out of college, and hopefully it becomes also an intervention in terms of ensuring that uh, citizens are cushioned from vulnerabilities that come with um, looking for opportunities for work. Another exemplary and promising collaboration with our partners is the Kenya Social Economic Inclusion Project involving the government and the World Bank aimed at diversifying social protection programs and transitioning them from dependency on government funding into income generation. Through tested graduation models, these interventions are presently underway in Taita Taveta, Moranga, Makueni, Marsabit, and Kisumu counties. We have made steady progress in inclusive education over the past 20 years when free and compulsory primary education was inaugurated. Over the years, free day secondary has been introduced to complement it. We have now implemented a 100% transition and established a pathway framework to anchor tertiary education with in our Tibets. Tibet is going to provide marginated skills and innovation to power Kenya's industrialization enable it to grow into a technical and industrial powerhouse. Necessary engagements are also underway to ensure that government provides Kenyan learners with high quality education that will equip them to become leaders of the knowledge economy who will turn the country into a globally competitive innovation hotspot. Although Kenya's social security industry is worth one trillion. It has, now, it has low penetration 
at only 17%. Out of this, many are not saving enough for adequate income replacement. It is necessary to avoid foreseeable cyclical problems arising from a population that is deprived of financial cushion of savings. I therefore urge the National Social Security Fund, the Retirement Benefits Authority, and other stakeholders in both public and private sector to collaborate in formulating an effective contribution mechanism to mobilize adequate savings for every working person. I listened very carefully um, to the statement made by uh, Secretary General of Kotu, and I want to thank our social partners for their participation and their understanding. Uh, we've had challenges, we've had a problem for the last almost 10 years we could not implement the new rates that we had negotiated. But because of their participation and their understanding, I am now happy that it is not the case anymore that citizens will be contributing 200 shillings to NSSF. That from last month, Every Kenyan now will contribute 6% of their pay so that we can progressively build cushion so that we can also eliminate old age poverty. Many of the people that we have on the cash transfer program are former workers, people who worked, but because the culture of saving was absent, in their retirement, as you heard uh, Dr. Atuoli say, many people's 